that we are a prototype business. I believe the whole space business is a prototype business. Building one-offs, building a few-offs. In the normal, if you compare it with car manufacturers, we're only building prototypes. Hey, Space Watchers. This is Space Cafe Radio, your channel about trends, great people and awesome conferences. And I'm Thorsten, publisher of Spacewatch.global. My guest is Niels Boos, the CEO of GOMSpace. We spoke mid-September at the World Satellite Business Week held in the Westin Hotel in Paris to get his insights and views about his business, his business growth and its challenges. Enjoy our conversation. Niels, you just put in this new strategy and you also told us about it on stage earlier. Can you please go more into details what a new strategy for a small set manufacturer means? For us, it means in a way a new start because we have been about for quite some time. We've been on the stock exchange for six years. We went to the stock exchange with a plan and we have been through times where we had to readjust and do find a new way of coping, a new way of making a difference. And you could say that we are on those compared to the SPACs and others, we are now in a situation where we have to live with the decisions we took and we've come through it. We have been to a major turnaround in the company in the process laying off a hundred people in that process and still now on the way forward. And we have been looking at a new way of making a difference. It still matters. We believe that we can come with something new, come with something new to the table that can make some changes. Because even though it's a growing business, it's also a fierce competition. If we cannot come with something new, you can argue whether we have a purpose for existing. And we believe that we have. So we've been working for this for some time. We have had some changes in the board. We have changes in the ownership that have given the basis to do that. Uh, and also in that way could attract new uh, ownership to the company. But it's also a learning of what have happened and what we believe must happen for going forward. So that's the core of what it is about the content of it. We very much believe that this is a business that's going through stages. In Oldbor, where we come from, we were in this area was among the very first pioneers making mobile phones. So we've seen all the different changes in the value chain in mobile phones that have more or less swept over this northern Jutland area, like waves going one way, going the other way, going back again. And we believe the same thing is going to happen in this space area. So we sometimes talk of this as absolutes. I don't believe it's absolutes at all. It's stages. It's going to go through. Having learned from these experiences where we threw ourselves into it and had very high aspirations and very much eager and like the whole business was at that stage, we are now in a phase where we have things we can learn from. And there's some core elements we can learn from. One thing is that it becomes very clear once you want to look into making constellations that we are a prototype business. I believe the whole space business is a prototype business. Building one-offs building a few offs. In the normal, if you compare it with car manufacturers, we're only building prototypes. We're building custom cars, something like that. And that's okay when you're testing technology. But now we're beginning to have customers, even though it's very small, but they are now testing their business cases. That means that they're relying on the data always is coming. And then the quality and the reliability and the, the quality of service becomes key elements. Combining that with very low price satellites with, uh, in the beginning, we were amateurs doing that. That doesn't really fit together. So it's become very clear for us that this quality and reliability and the challenges for that is continuing to put demands on us. So once and for all, we've said, okay, how do we solve that? How do we make sure that we get to the stage where we actually can make a constellation and we can provide a proper quality of service, like 95, 99% uptime for 300 satellites or something like that, which is something that none of us have done before. Not even the big ones, the old ones have done this before. So what we have done is with that, we have, it's a little bit of coincidence, but we have uh, allied ourselves with Porsche Consulting who knows how to make automobiles in a big way. They were very interested in learning about the space industry and they were looking at making interviews and things like that. Through those interviews, we formed a relationship and we've been working for nearly a year now, a three quarter of a year, where they've been involved in our strategy development. And this is very interesting. The outcome of that is extremely interesting. If we say we want to make a satellite with high quality and reliability, we have to make many. 
So that had implications with the market. We're not working for one individual customer anymore. We're working for a market in that sense. We have to select the product that can go into a market rather than one customer. That's a big difference in the culture in the company. What is the number of satellites you built already? It's about 10, 20 a year, something like that. That's the size. We have a lot of projects also in cooperating. So it's not, it's still in orbit demonstration phase. And we are about 250 people. So there's a lot of work going in it, but still. So making those satellites with the guidance of Porsche, we actually started with the manufacturing and say, okay, what do we need to be able to manufacture a satellite with this quality and reliability and this cost and this reaction time and things like that? And then try to focus on how do we get the biggest share of the market? And then we go into the space engineers say, make that. Usually it's always the other way around. And then we have to produce whatever they figure out. So that's a major change in the culture, that the way we're going to work. Again, when we talk about the quality and reliability, it all comes down to the components that's put into the car. If you take Volkswagen, they have three consultancy companies, Audi, Volkswagen, and Porsche. And they were basically, all of them except Porsche, made for going out to the sub-suppliers, learning or teaching them how to make components that is actually good enough to put into their car. We face the same problem. Because if you take 30 major components in a satellite, you have a 99% reliability, which sounds good. But multiply 99 by itself 30 times, it's only half of the satellites that works properly. So we have to have go up in that culture. We have to have control of that part. These demands turned out uh, in three phases of our strategy. Uh, and I should say before I explain that the final stage of our strategy is that we want to be able to provide the customers with the ability to ensure their services. That means like in ships, You can actually ensure that the ship is going to make enough money. And if it's not making enough money, insurance company comes in. That's the way. And they're the same in windmill farms, you can do that. So we want to do that. But that all starts with all the components that put in the satellite, the way the satellite is made and assembled. So that's our vision. So what we're doing in our three-step strategy, now I will get to it, is that first is product development, develop the new components for the satellites, enhanced capabilities and things like that. That's the product investment plan. We have the first stage funded of that with a highly wealthy individual uh, English guy, uh, Pete Hargraves, owner of Hargraves and Lansdowne, the biggest private investment pension fund platform in the UK. The next phase is going to be an industrial investment plan. That's where the products is made ready for serial production. And then we are homing in to making us one satellite that can fit most of the market. We choose a segment of the market, then we make a satellite for that. And the way that we work with the car company, we thought that we were going to, like the Volkswagen, say, when they called me, I said, oh, you can make a Polo, a Passat, and a, a Golf, and a whatever. And then you use the same components. That's what we want to do with making the different versions of our satellites. It turns out to be different. So a Lego 2.0. Yeah, something like that, yes. It turned out to be different. It turned out to be a platform. One platform, a truck, truck and a trailer, a vision of it. The truck is the same whether you drive with half a container or you drive a big special transport. But the trailer, which is the payload, that's where you put the differences in. Yeah. So you can buy one or you can buy 5,000 if the truck is the same. But the trailer is in such a way that if you have a heavy mass, you can put an extra reaction wheel in the trailer. You can put extra antennas on the trailer if you need that. But the core of the truck is going to be the same every time. It sounds a bit like the old-fashioned space industry is. We see buses that you had on the big satellites, on the bus for the 100, 250 kilogram class. A structure that is open enough for payloads. Yes. So now you miniaturize that on the CubeSat level. Is that correctly or on the small SAT level? You could say that. It's a big telecommunication geos yeah. that we've seen in the last decade. Yeah. They had similar buses. They were a special purpose, but not just from the beginning, yeah. just on the and, payload. And, and, so then it's a similar, the chassis is yeah. the same. Yeah, exactly. And it would make sense because the development on that is maybe not so big uh, as on the communications or whatever side it is. But I guess the big difference is here we can get numbers. Yeah. If we can get up in many numbers in this way. And of course, the interface is standard. So if the interface is known, then either we can have some standard payloads that could come with their own payloads. They can even use them for in orbit demonstration. They can use them for constellations. For what growth is that needed? You said we have 10 satellites a, a year. Mm -hmm. 
potentially special purpose yeah. for the prototype. Yeah, yeah. a yeah. few of a kind. Yeah. But that's complete new, what you're just talking about. You talk about the, let's call it industrialization. Yeah? That's and we see that with a few constellations, which are in-house produced. Mm. So where are you heading with that idea? Our vision and ambition is orders of magnitude. And really getting up, because I believe if we can get a product that people, when they're making payloads, they can see, okay, we don't have to make it anymore. We don't have to do this to have quality under control, understanding the quality mm -hmm. that we do not have under control, making sure that there's a delivery. If they could see, hmm, we can have this at a reasonable price, actually a lower price, because now, we, now the numbers are spread across different vendors. We believe that there's an opportunity that those who in the first round needed to make the satellites themselves, they would say, this is not necessary anymore. We can get rid of that. And I, I think we can also find some evidence when we talk with these people that the, some of those who needed to do that in the beginning, and I, I actually understand they need to do that, but now they have a, a factory making satellites only for themselves, and they try to sell it to others, but that is their competitors. That's not going to be successful in, in the future because would you buy something from your competitor that is critical? Probably not. So what we can go out and say to them, we say, we can do that for you. And you can, then you can get free of those investments and then be free at, at your competitive level, at your level in the value chain. And my personal vision is not any way, anywhere concrete. My personal vision is actually in some of the instances, we don't make murders in acquisitions we, because we want to make sure that we go to the growth, we use our effort to the growth. Right. But acquiring somebody's manufacturing actually would make sense. So we can help restructuring in that way and then not collapsing or merging the, the vertical integration, but separating in the vertical and in the business. That is some of the possibilities that open when we think like this. There's a long time to that maturity, but a little bit like Flextronics. Flexon ended up making the mobile phones. And then the companies, they were selling and distributing the mobile phones. That kind of thing at a much earlier stage is, is what we believed in could be possible. So in kind of higher quality control, quality improvement, standardization, industrialization, is then a required step to get pension funds in or was connect to that? Yes, I believe so. There's probably variations of it. But what you need is the need to be able to ensure the operation. Mm -hmm. Once you can ensure the operation, then you can go out and have a leasing agreement. If you, you are leasing equipment, leasing a car or something, if you don't have an insurance so that those who finance the leasing can get the money if the car is being destroyed or if it's not able to drive or something like that, you cannot have it. So this is the key, purely by coincidence. And it's not until afterwards we came to think about it. I was actually an interim CEO of a brokerage company in Denmark who brokered the first insurances for operating investors. I think they said they lost a lot of money on it, but they got started. They got started in this, and today, all the, the windmill farms, there's loads and loads of pension fund men. That, there's actually a company in Denmark, Copenhagen Contractors, that is one of the biggest in the world doing that, or orchestrating that kind of financing for windmills. When we can do that in our business, the possibilities for growth is much bigger. So I said, our customer is a customer, but it's a market, but it's also the insurance companies. So we already now start talking with the insurance company, try to make them understand and try to learn what does it take for us to give them information so that they can make the calculations and calculate the risk associated with this. So this is what we want to do. Interesting. So where will we see GOM space in the next three, five years? In this really absolute dramatic changing environment where we're in. I think in the space sector, we never had this breathtaking momentum than we have it now. No. I mean, driven also by, by circumstances which came externally, which are not nice. Yeah, with the war on our doorstep, yeah. with climate change and so on. So there is the awareness and the demand for more services. Yeah. So how will that go into your growth? What is the situation with us right now is that we have a mix between products and projects. Even though we want to be more and more products, It's always packaged as a project. But right now we have around 30% product content in our deliveries. That's not enough because engineering and especially engineering where we're doing something for people and keeping the IPR, they don't want to pay that much for that. So the product investment program is intended to go from 30% product content in what we're doing to 60%. So when we do that, we will come very good into money. And that's, I'm not allowed to say specifically when we will be in the money on that, but that's probably a two, three-year program. And the investment is close to, I think it's 35 million euros that the product investment program is going to be at. So it's a substantial amount of money that, that we're going to put into our development. In, so we will take people into that also from some of the projects 
And that's going to be a difficult part for us to do. And that's going to be my challenge to convince, yes, we don't have to take a big project to get the turnover and forgo that turnover of something that's an outlay of what we're doing and then actually put the people to make new products and then have the rise in the turnover a little bit later. You cannot have all the people in the world because that's difficult at this time, but we have to redirect that. So we've grown 30, 40% a year. So that's probably going to be a little bit less because we will stop that and put it in and then hopefully it's going to go much faster after. But when we can well, get into delivering those products. I see. The November this year will be very interesting for Europe with the Ministerial Council. What is your call to your government? How to support you? Are you happy? Can they do more? So what is the status in Denmark? The Danish ESA participation is very low. It's at the size of Luxembourg. And we're actually getting better help from Luxembourg than we have from Denmark. It's not because they're not good, doing a good job. That's the circumstances in Denmark. The people who's working with it is doing well. But the way the strategy is managed in, in Denmark is such that uh, it's more or less the companies that are agreeing how to share it. And that's not following a strategy. That's the sharing. So that that's the circumstances in Denmark. They are doing whatever they can to help us. But the participation is far too low. For the same reason, because even though it's very important to be commercial and going to that, we have to work with ASAP because that's where we can develop technology for mid and long term. In any case, we are turning the company into a European company. It was founded in Denmark. We are still most people in Denmark, but we are in Luxembourg, we are in Uppsala, and we are now building up in Toulouse as well. Our new sales director for the whole company sitting in Toulouse, and we are starting to form the relations here and to build up having engineers and others here. And in, in, eventually, the company's structures will be so that we are a pan-European company with the management sitting around. That's difficult. But as an old Lego boss in a company said, when I was complaining, having an R&D sites, different places, he said, Nils, you better learn it. It's the future. So we better learn it. That's how it is to learn it, to have the organization in that. What an insightful talk with Nils. I apologize the noise in the background. We recorded the interview in a pretty noisy restaurant at the event location. But I think we made the best out of it. If you want to stay on the pulse of the space industry, please visit our website at www.spacewatch.global and subscribe to our newsletters. Do you know about our other products? Our Space Cafe podcast with Markus Moslechner or our Space Cafe web talk series? No? One more reason to visit our website. And don't forget to become a Space Watcher. I'm Thorsten Kreening, CEO and publisher of Spacewatch.global, your independent perspective of space. <laughs>